Okay, and uh, what we're going to be doing uh, to make slight adjustments on the knife itself, okay? But what I am going to do, uh, part of just not making the adjustments, I am going to take apart the knife itself because I want you guys to see everything, okay? I want you to see the inner workings of the product so you understand, you know, the difference between seeing what a liner lock knife is and a back lock. This is more specific to a back lock. We are going to take a liner lock knife apart, you know, here soon um, so I can show you the inner workings of that but um, aside from all that I uh, wanted to mention um, when we take this apart there is a uh, issue that about I'd say about 20 25 percent of my customers have gone through and that is with the jimping that is on the hex feature of the CDHK and the problem is when people deploy after a while with the knife the edge of their pants and mine just it's so minute you can barely even see what's on there see if I can show it to you over here but it's just a minute amount that has come off the inner lining part of my pants so, you know, things are going to happen, guys. You know, the threading around here, even on my pants, just a little bit of the thread came off. But this is after many, 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 I don't even know how many, hundreds of times that have deployed the knife just to show people how to use it and whatnot. This is what you'll see. So, I don't have the issue. But there are some people that I guess are a little bit rougher. Uh, or it might be the pants that you're wearing. So, I really don't know. But regardless, the reason why I reduced the price on the CDHK, if you guys remember, to $99.95 and for the knife set, and that's the trainer with the knife, we did that at $159.95. So it's basically $1 more than your Fox knife. And obviously our Fox knives are $100 less than the other knives that work and deploy the same way as the CDHK and the Fox knives. So we really try to meet within everybody's budget, but the main reason why we put this at $99.95 was because of this tiny little issue. Now the next batch of knives that we're going to get, guys, uh, just letting you know, so at least you know, they're going to be all black, so they're all going to look like this, okay? And they are going to be slightly rounded, just slightly, on the edges here, just slightly. And we're trying to see if we can get a much better coating put on it. I'm not going to reveal the coating yet uh, that's going to be put on here. But when it does come around and when we do have it finalized, I'm going to let you know. But I can tell you there's going to be some advantages to the newer model. We're going to make it 11 grams lighter um, than, it, you know, than it is already because it's at 5.3 ounces. We're going to bring it down to right around 4.7, 4.8. So we're trying to get it down, you know, about three quarters of an ounce if we can make that happen. But we'll see what happens when it comes out. But in the meantime, guys, oh, and by the way, this is going to retail uh, for $119.95. So we're going to keep the price down. But because we're doing the coating and because we're making the improvements uh, and the tooling that has to go on the improvements, to make this lighter it's going to cost a little bit more for us so we have to we have to bring up the cost anyway so but that's what we're going to be facing with that this was normally selling for 124.95 anyway and i'm going to tell you right now any american made knife that was completely made here in the states utilizing 154 american made steel from niagara steel company out in uh, in new york which this is the same steel you'd be paying anywhere from $250 on to $300 plus dollars. And I'm not kidding you. If people don't believe it, just get online, do some research on Karambits, and you'll find out very quickly for anybody making this and utilizing this steel, that's what you'd be paying. But the cool thing is, is that the, um, the knife here, because it's at this price, all you have to do, guys, and I'm going to show you tonight, is shaving off the edges. And that's what I'm going to do. So... I just went to Lowe's and just spent a few dollars and got an ordinary nail file. 
and I'll tell you exactly what I got. I got the cobalt eight inch mill file and I'll bring it out so you guys can see it. Hopefully, I don't know how clear it's going to come out, but if you can see that, that's what I, that's what I purchased. Ah, the story behind the double curve instead of a smooth single curve. All right, Jake, I'll get to you in a moment. But, guys, that's the cobalt mill file that you can get. It's 8 inches. They sell them 6 inches and 12 inches. I just got the 8 inches because um, that's really all you need. You, you need the 6-inch one, actually. But I just wanted to get a medium-sized one. But just to answer this question because people want to find out about the bat wing. There's a thing called length. All right, and believe it or not, the length on this blade is two and a quarter inches, okay? So you're dealing from here to here, two and a quarter inches. But what makes this blade more unique, all right, besides the cool factor that it's got a bat wing feature, is that this blade is a tad bit longer because it's utilizing that bat wing feature. So if you were to actually stretch it out more, the blade would probably come out about this much further in length. Now, this was because Mike Velikamp designed it this way. I asked him to do it, and I even asked him. He said, because the blade length makes it longer. So, but it does not impede whatsoever. Actually, it cuts just as good, and I've had it cut even better as some of my other knives. But I'm telling you, guys, it works fantastic. No different than any of the other knives. It just gives you a longer blade, but it won't reveal that because from end to end, you're seeing two and a half when it's just a tad bit longer. So I hope you guys get what I'm saying. So anyway, and it gives that aggressive look to it. I, I see that Waldivere just made a comment there. Thanks, buddy. But guys, I'm going to show you this right now. I'm going to bring up, I'm going to bring it right over here so you can see what I'm going to be doing. But guys, the edge on this has, it does show its aggression, but all you have to do, guys, is just use a file and just bring it down a little bit. Now my dog's going to go crazy, but just ignore him. And I'm just going to file this to feel. Now I'm stocking I'm stopping in between guys because I don't want to go too far down. And I'm just hitting this guys at a 45 degree angle just on the edges, okay? So hopefully I'm showing it as as best I can. I'm trying to do the best I can here. I'm glad the dog's being entertained. go all right I'm gonna do the top a little bit now I'm doing it with the blade open probably not the wisest thing I would suggest you close it. Thank God you didn't have to learn from my mistake that could have happened. So. All right. There you go. Wow. Better. Now. That's it. Now that's finished. So now what I'm going to do, guys, is I am going to take apart the whole knife. So you guys can see the inner workings of how this product works. Uh, JMG741, uh, by the way, I did mention that in the beginning of the video. We are coming just to let you know, guys, all right? And the other thing I was going to mention, we're coming out with the CDHT, the Cold Dead Hands Tonto. So we're coming out with the same exact knife like this, but it's going to be a Tonto version. I'll show you that prototype next week when we do YouTube Live. 
so you'll see it. But this is what's going to look, guys. All black. All right. Yes, like I mentioned, it will be just a little bit more. It's only going to be one nineteen ninety five, guys. So that's the price. But let me get to this and show you guys the inner workings of the product. Close the knife here. So I'm a little bit more careful. I'm using a T8 nib on the apex screw. And now I'm going to use a T6 nib. And this is for a Torx nib. All right. Because that's what they use. The company that I worked with to make this happen. And they use the Torx even on the clip itself. Now I had some people say, well, there's no metal threading on the inside of the liner when you're unscrewing. The, uh, the, uh, the clip screw. The clip screw. Well, you don't need it, guys, because the screws are long enough where the threading is on the inside part of the liner. So as it goes right through the G10, it's going on the inside of the liner. So you get to see it. Or else the G10 liner would not come off. So... There we go. Take that off. There's the inside of the liner. And usually what I do is I just get a screwdriver and I just pry it open a little bit. Take that out. There you go. Now you're seeing the inner workings of the knife. All right. So what I'm going to do, so you get to see it. And hopefully I can get close enough to let you guys see this. And you don't I don't lose you. There we go. There we go. So now I'm gonna open this up so you get to see how this works. Alright. Well, no worries. I'll find that in a moment. I see where it is. <laughs> that's one of the holding pins, but that's okay. But just to see, just to let you see how it works, guys. When you're pressing on this, and I want to try to do this as gently as I can, that's how you open and close the knife. All right. Now I gotta find my washer. Okay, the washer came off. There we go, I found it. So now you see how it works. That's as simple as that, guys. So now I'm gonna take the blade off. There's a washer inside. The blade goes on. And then the washer goes on the other side. And the pin is what actually holds. It's a stopping pin. But the stopping pin came out, so give me a second. I want to grab that pin. All right. So, guys, I'm going to put this back together here in just a moment, but I just wanted to show you the inner workings of how this knife works, okay? One of the things I know a lot of people mention is, like, they want to oil the knife. You can oil the knife. you got no problems oiling the knife. The only thing is, is that a lot of people want to oil the knife to make it smoother to deploy, but it's not going to because you got to you got to think about this, guys. It's metal rubbing up against metal. So if I put this here, I'm going to show it to you again, guys. The back part of the back lock, okay, and the blade itself. You can see when it's moving, 
It's metal against metal. And that's why some people have issues. So with I'm going to answer that question in a moment. Someone says to take it apart. You don't need to take it apart. But a lot of people, they have this issue with the knife because they say, hey, you know what? This is a little bit hard to deploy rather than a liner lock. And the reason why is because you do have to pull it out with more intent. That goes with any back lock. But over time, it does smooth out a little bit more. Because you got to remember, this is stamped and treated steel, okay? And when they tumble it, it does give it a much more smoother feel. But over time, it'll get better. The thing I like about the CDHK, it just works right out of the box. I got to tell you, I'm really impressed with it. Now, when you're dealing with the black version, the black version is going to have a coating on the inside. Now, you can see it's it's gotten a little... I'm going to see if I can get you up there. There you go. I'm going to move it more to the center. Forgive me, guys. But over here... The colorization has changed because obviously the coating over time, because it opens and closes, has come off. But it's going to have a different feel for a little while. It comes with any backlock knife. It's just going to have a slightly different feel until the coating is totally smoothed out. And when that happens, then it's going to then it's 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 still going to deploy and work just as good as the rest of them. It's just that you're not dealing with any kind of coating that's on a regular stainless steel one. So that's how it works, guys. And just know this. When you're putting oil in, the oil that we usually use, and I haven't loaded everything up yet to make it live. Don't have it with me right now. We use Tough Glide. And Tough Glide has a little pin tip. And all you have to do, you can do it when it's closed or open, just add, all you have to do is just add a drop on one side and on the other side, or if it's closed, you can do the same thing. When it's closed, guys, let to see if I got a, a pen or a pen, yeah, I got a pen right here. You can actually put a drop on one side and then on the other side. And then just move it up and down and let gravity do its work. And that's on the washers. But guys, I'll be honest with you. I've had my knife for uh, about a year now. I've only done it twice. I haven't had to do it. And I've opened that thing up a hundred, I mean hundreds of times. Not had any issues. It deploys just as smooth as it did when I got it. So it doesn't have ball bearings. Ball bearings, they use a little bit of pack grease on it, so it's a little bit different than oiling it, you know what I mean? But uh, this doesn't need that. I mean, it really deploys pretty easy. I've never had any issues, and pops right open. I don't have any problems with it. So there you go, guys. Now you've seen it, and uh, actually while I'm here, I'm actually going to take this apart. And the reason why is because... There is something that I'm going to need to do. And that thing that I need to do is I have to... See? You got the pin over here. This ring feature is going to be going somewhere overseas because I have a company that's going to be taking this very one and we're going to be adding that on the stroke force. So it's going to be all black still, the ring feature, but it's going to go on the strobe force, the window breaker, along with the jimping. So that's going to be on a new and improved model that we're going to be making. Um, so looking forward to that. So I love the flashlight. It really works great. But anyway, I wanted to tell you guys the special that we're going to be having. All right. If you got the email, all right, we have it on the 599 rs which is the rescue model the all black one and the 599 rsy 
which is the yellow UV reactive G10 handle. Both those models, they retail for $198.95. We, we were selling them, guys, for $149.95. We're doing an October special for the next two weeks for near cost. I'm just going to say that. Guys, at one fourteen ninety five, and if you went online and you got the email, guys, get them because I know that's not going to last very long. So I just want to let you know that and give you that deal. And uh, we're going to have more deals coming up, but that's the thing to get, guys. That rescue knife is incredible. I know I've shown it to you guys. Unfortunately, I don't have the very one with me except one of the samples. This is the red colored version one that we have. This is a prototype. We never went with this one because people wanted the yellow and the black one. They didn't want the red one, but that's okay. But this is identical to all the other ones. But it's got the Phillips head screwdriver. It's got a carbide window breaker. It has Ron Lake's locking mechanism on it. So the liner will not collapse on itself if it's accidentally pressed. So unless you switch it back, and then when you flip it back, then you can close it. <clears throat> it's got a three-quarter serrated blade. And it's got a rounded tip. Fantastic, guys, if you're trying to cut a seat belt. If I did this with a regular tip right now, I'd be in the hospital. But I'm telling you, the rounded tip makes all the difference. Carabiner clip. Jimping on the back. And the great thing is we put some knurling on the inside so it deploys the same way as our other knives. Guys, $114.95 for the all black one and the yellow UV reactive handle. For people that are in the military, people that are in law enforcement, rescue, coast guard, EMT, paramedic, Anybody that needs something like this, guys, is fantastic to have. The other thing that I like about it, this carabiner clip, <clears throat> I think is handy. Because if you need it to be in a place where you need to reach it, there we go. So... Someone mentioned about a combat use when they're using the locks. Guys, when you're using the locks, especially in a combat situation, you're not going to be thinking about using it. Now, I know mine that I have over time, it naturally just pushes forward to lock it in place to keep it locked when it's open. But it's not going to, you cannot engage it when it's closed. I just wanted to mention that. This cannot be engaged when it's closed. The only way it can be engaged is when it's open. Then you can slide it. So I hope that answers your question. But in a combat situation, guys, you're not going to need to engage it. You're going to be in the tussle using that thing, and you're not going to be, you're not going to have to worry about it. All right. So. I think a lot of people get a misconception about liner locks not working or being reliable as opposed to back locks. I've used both of them, and I have put mine through all kinds of rigors, guys. I've not had any problems at all. I keep on proving that with this model, and I've shown videos on it. This is the original prototypes of the 599 from five plus years ago. And I still have it. It's worn out. But guys, it's not collapsed. It's not doing anything. Guys, no matter what I do, it hasn't done anything. I'm not back whacking it. I've always applied pressure on the right places. The way a karambit knife should be used. I'm not flailing to back whack. Anybody that does that, over time, you are going to compromise that liner. But... That'll be for another time I talk about it. But in any case, guys, we do have this available. And 
These are handmade in Italy, guys. Fox Knives makes these for us, and they allowed us to have some freedom for a short time to sell it to you guys. One fourteen ninety five, guys. This thing is phenomenal. I got one in the car. I just keep it in the car. I do it to open up my packages or whatever. But if I ever get in a situation where I need to break my window and I can't do it, if I'm Never know, you're going to get stuck in the water. I mean, we had that flood in Houston. Thank goodness I wasn't around. But <clears throat> you need to cut your seatbelt for whatever reason. It won't come loose. You don't know what's going to happen in an accident. Gasoline could be leaking somewhere. You don't want to put yourself in a bad situation. And you need something quickly. Guys, this is a lifesaver. And for me, 115 bucks, I wouldn't bat an eye, even if it was 200 I'd still get it anyway. I've gotten a lot of knives, <laughs> you know, but that's what got me into this industry. So anyway, guys, I hope this was helpful. Hope you enjoyed watching this. And next week, check your email this coming Tuesday again. I'm going to send it early in the morning this time instead of late in the afternoon. Sorry about sending it late. So I know maybe some of you guys may have missed this, but that's okay. Anybody that gets this email, they can click on the link and they can watch the video anyway. Um, so you're not going to miss a lot. You know what? Cole has only engaged back whack in combat. Combat. You know what? If you do that, you can, guys. I, I know people go back and forth with this stuff. I always make sure that if I'm going to get into a tussle that I know is going to demand... Me having to use a knife if I do not have a choice. Now, there's choices. But if I don't have a choice and I got no way out, and there's no way for me to escape, and I have no choice but to use a knife, I'm going to use the blade edge. I'm not going to be using the back part of the knife. Now, if I can do it to control somebody, yeah. That I'm not going to have any fear about either. Back lock or liner lock, it's a one-time, one-use ditch effort knife. The reason why I say it's one time, one use, guys, after your tussle, you're going to have to report it to the police. Of course, in the military, it's a little bit different. But I'm saying here as a civilian, if you had no way out and you had no choice and you had to use it, you had absolutely no choice. You couldn't fight your way out. You couldn't get your way out. You're in a life threatening situation and your life depended on it. Then you're going to have to deal with law enforcement afterwards and you're going to have to surrender that and that'll be another time another topic to talk about but go into that later but anyway aside from that guys appreciate you joining i look forward to seeing you guys next week at 9 p.m tuesday evening i want to try to make this a regular thing and if you have any suggestions about things you want to talk about that are knife related with the products we sell, or even the flashlight, please let us know, because we want to be able to help you. That's why we're doing this, because I want to give back to you what you've given to me. And you've been able to help me out in a great way. I want to help you back. That's why we do this. So, guys, thanks again. Hope you had a great time joining in tonight, and uh, many more to come. I'll talk to you guys later, all right? Take care. Bye-bye.